Hi, Dad. Hi, Siri. Oh, uh, I didn't. Oh, there I am. Okay. I got an image. I have some. So let's try and do this uh, in five minutes. This is our third take because of um, technical problems. We're going to talk about Claudia Rankin and John Lucas's Situation 5, um, and I'm wondering what some of your thoughts are about it. Well, um, to put it uh, the briefest possible way, an extremely impressive uh, piece of work, both as a kind of visual digital essay and as a, let's say, a poem that is... Um, uh, alongside that, or we can we can put it either way. Okay, and the reaction that was most uh, to the front of my mind when I watched this uh, thing was that, in some ways, I found myself uh, thinking that on the one hand this sort of like video digital essay was more powerful and that in a way it was um, just to be simple about it more to my liking but that they were both excellent and that also somehow there's a lack of synchronicity between them with regard to their attitude to the subject matter, and I guess I am more in sympathy with the video than with the poem, although I admire the poem greatly. Yeah, well, I mean, I think what's interesting about your discussion of the two components of the piece is that, of course, it's ultimately one piece. It's one video with a soundtrack that's, that is... Um, been overlaid over a visual experience that was recorded first and so of course naturally that um, dissynchronicity between them is something that the artists were interested in. Um, can you talk about what you think the differences are between how the visual track works and the audio track works in relationship to the subject? Well, the subject would appear to be uh in the case of the video track, if you just watched it and you turned off the sound, you would be on a road trip with an African-American and sort of reading his mind and getting a picture of his character while sort of seeing the same things he sees. And he's in the driver's seat and you're in the suicide seat and you're looking at America, and you're sort of looking at Afro-American history or something like that. Right. And I think it's kind of like masterfully done. As a, as a, as a, just simply a visual feast mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. uh, with regard to the poem, it's one of these uh, poems that is very, very powerful where there is an attempt to communicate, I think, primarily to a non-African American audience the African American experience, particularly as it relates to men, brothers. Yes, of course the voice is female. No kidding, okay. So it's a female who has the diction of a very highly educated upper middle class to upper class African American about the brothers. And the brothers I are by and large, if not a third of the brothers are in prison or 25% of the brothers are in prison. The rest are not, but they're sort of imprisoned. But the people who who are of her class are also imprisoned. I mean, if you read anything about this from Invisible Man on, or even earlier than that, uh, to the present moment, and they're being written about by highly educated African Americans going back to whoever you want to call Du Bois or anybody much, much earlier than that, 
and also by women, by Nikki Giovanni writing about the brothers on the street corner. But there is a uh, that way of describing your subject matter is not as comfortable to me. Now maybe we want she wants me to have that discomfort as sort of sitting next to this brother and having me drive having uh, him driving me around and sort of getting a piece of his mind while I'm sitting right. there as the overeducated Hungarian American <laughs> uh, uh, prof- retired professor. Well, you know, I I really enjoy the way uh, this conversation is playing out. Um, and I guess what I would want to think about is the, it's not even a triangulation, but, a, you know, there are four players in the scene that they've produced. So there's the subject, an African-American man who himself is not speaking but is driving. There's the man filming him who's in the car engaged in some kind of shared experience with him. There's the female voice from afar that's seeing it in a different way. And then there's you, you know, engaged in this, you know, very complex dynamic that is raising for you questions about proximity and distance, um, class, race, and gender. Because every single player in this scene is differentially class, race, and gendered. I mean, because I know that the man filming is a white man. I know that the woman speaking is a black woman. I know you are a white man. I know the man driving is a black man. So in that sense, I feel the piece as a whole, you know, with with these tensions that are produced is quite successful just in that it asks us to think about Is seeing enough, you know, is hearing enough, is sitting side by side enough, is being, are, is being brothers and sisters enough? How can we um, deeply know uh, the difficult experiences of other human beings? Indeed. And this is a complete distraction, but I don't believe it's completely irrelevant. I was thinking that the very end, when the screen blacks out, the voice we hear is that of the driver. It's the subject. Mm -hmm. That's That's not a distraction. I read. That's the way I read it. That's fine, and I, you know, his voice enters at the end. So, so I think, in fact, when when we lose his image, we actually hear him speak, and then the thing is over. That's right. the way I read it yeah. the first time I saw it and the second time I saw it. But if we think about it, this... That was the driver speaking to me now yeah. or speaking to the videographer. Right. Or whatever. right, and I think that, you know, I'd like to end because it, it will work better on YouTube if it's short. And then we've, got, we've raised a lot of provocative Im- uh, questions, but I feel like, you know, so much of YouTube is really about people speaking for themselves, self-authoring, and this piece is so artful in a certain sense because there are all these layers uh, and distancing and then sort of returning to his voice as opposed to the kind of straight to the camera thing that you and I are doing, which is not nearly as artful. And, um, you know, it it asks us those questions as well, those questions of, you know, do you have to hear directly from one human being talking straight to a camera to understand them in that profound way we might want to think through complex issues like incarceration or race or... Or what Famil- is it families. Like to be a brother who is not literally behind bars, who can drive around. Yes, but, but you know what, Dad? That footage, rock, Dad. That footage know. was shot the day he left prison. Be that as it may, he's in a. Yes, box. but you had, you felt box. it in the footage. Yeah. I mean, it's in her voice as well. She's telling. Yeah. She's talking to us. Um, so I'd like to conclude. Would you like to say one last thing, and we can continue to talk offline? The last thing is the last thing, which is obviously an enormously provocative art piece. And I I guess I was one of those people who were schooled that a really uh, first-class artwork should be very provocative. Sure as hell provoked me.